Hi, yeah. Welcome everybody to the Scottish Poetry Library. Thanks for coming. It's been an amazing week of, um, of poetry being created in the Scottish Poetry Library. Um, and thanks go to Kat Hepburn and Kevin Gilday for bringing out so much of the poetry um, from the students. And thanks to Madge McGonagall and to Melissa Mathis, where she got to there, hiding, um, for um, accompanying the students along the way. Just, uh, I've been working through the week and uh, tapping away at the computer downstairs and just hearing the applause and the excitement and the energy from upstairs and I've been really looking forward to hearing how it's gone. So I'm going to hand over to Kev, who's going to introduce each of you and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you've been up to. Yeah, we've had an amazing uh, couple of days and obviously Kat was with us before that. Um, just creating art and doing it in a really kind of um, unselfconscious way, in a way that has kind of been really liberating and amazing and just a chance for us to sit down and just write and get our feelings out on the page and to, to talk about issues that are important to us. Uh, and I'm so proud of the work that's came out of it, and especially in such a short time. So we've got six students, three from Edinburgh, three from Dublin, and they're going to be sharing the work. But what we also asked them to do, which was amazing and kind of a bit of a revelation, was we asked them to collaborate with each other and create art together. Uh, and they really far exceeded their expectations in regards to that because some of it is just absolutely fantastic uh, and I'm so happy to, to be able to present it to you tonight. So we're going to have our groups coming up, our collaborations coming up first and then each of the poets is going to come up and read their individual work after that. So without any further ado I'm going to invite our first collaboration up to the stage. Please make lots of noise for Ellen and Connor! <laughs> Um, so, our poem is called Dear Earth. Um, you poor, poor earth, you used to be so kind and so beautiful, now you are just polluted. Venus said she would leave us as you mislead us, you have lost your greenness. The damage to your animals speaks to the calibres of destruction caused by production and construction. They don't care about how rare that bear is becoming, because endangerment doesn't matter both of you. You were once at your peak, but now you're a freak. So many gases leak when you speak. The humans on your surface make me nervous. They do you a disservice. I hope they do not visit. They have a vengeful spirit. I hope you get well soon. From your friend, the moon. <laughs> Amazing, great start. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And um, great twist in a poem when it's the moon at the end, right? Amazing stuff. Cool. Okay, let's move on to our next collaboration. Please go away and make lots of noise for Laura and for Jen. paused and took a breath. I woke and for a moment I felt no regret. Do I have the power, the time, the energy, the faith to see that our planet is secure, to see that our planet is safe? Regret has filled since that night where once was hope now lays no light. Heartbreaking thoughts it's led us to like big gaps in the earth that we need to renew. My hope has drained and now no use, never ending nagging about climate abuse. Whilst quite important, no hope is left. If you want to save the planet, be my guest. Fantastic, thank you so much for sharing that work with us. Um, okay. Like I said, these collaborations have been a real revelation. I love the, the language and the, the blending together of voices and the different perspectives coming into view. Uh, just amazing work. We've got one more for you before we move on to the individual poets. So let's make lots of noise for Alyssa and Isabella. <laughs>
This poem is called A Letter to the Earth. The earth has turned a lot less blue. It's covered by a sheet of smoke. One day, will that be me too? My future can't be seen to run this fog. Your sky is less blue, and your clouds don't seem as fluffy. I know you're worried, Ruth, right, as you watch us become victims for the greed of money. My people live in constant fear of one day meeting a similar fate. They worry that all they hold there will soon vanish, become a clean city. I live in constant fear of you becoming a war soon, leaving us for dead in your own space when all we've become is a disgrace. Well, how can we blame you? Your people are not to blame. The wounds on your sofa start to bleed as your tired people cry. Your health declines at rapid speed as they ask their gods for one more try. The water is chasing us for me to speed up our pace. We can feel you constantly crying over the human race. Just one more try to do things right, live life a better way. They won't give up without a fight to see a better day. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, what I probably should have mentioned before we started that is that we had a general theme running through the workshops <laughs> and that was of course the climate emergency. Um, which I feel like has been really kind of explored and expanded on and, and written about with such passion in these poems. Um, so I feel like, why have they all written about the same thing? It's because we were exploring that, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for all the collaborations there. Like I said, it was so kind of beautiful to, to see um, the students get together and create work as a team uh, and to find where they are kind of crossover was in terms of the way they write and the way they speak and the way they wanted to express themselves uh, and to, to really kind of yeah collaborate truly as artists so yeah thank you so much for, for doing that and thank you so much for creating that brilliant work it's now time for us to invite our individual poets to the stage they're going to read some individual work for you some of them will be reading one piece that, that might kind of relate to, to climate change and um, others will have multiple pieces that they might want to share we've kind of left it open to the students to, to decide what they want to do and uh, to be given this time and space to, to really express themselves so we wanted you to give them uh, lots of love and lots of uh, attention and Let's go wild and let's make lots of noise for our first guest. Please put your hands together for Connor. Hi, my poem's called Time to Amend. Sunny mornings, cheerful dries, icy arctics with wildlife that has a nice life. To my delight, I eat till I feel complete. Is it just me or does this world feel too good to be free? Blistering heats, then devastating drives in the car turned killer, melting ice caps with dismissed animals. Droughts cause clots that not food production, ourselves overwhelmed, can't comprehend what is the end. Recycle, reuse, then refuse to accept and allow this to be swept. As this all has an effect, we can't neglect. We have been condemned, it's time to amend. Thank you, Connor. Thank you so much. Uh, really powerful piece. Okay. I feel like we're just getting overwhelmed with amazing art just now. We'll take a wee second just to compose ourselves before we get our next artist up to the stage. So let's make lots of noise for Ellen! <laughs> I love the different colours, different names and different animals that are all connected to these amazing things. My mum loves flowers. She loves to water and take care of them. She loves to show off her garden after she's cut the grass. And she loves to see them bloom into something so beautiful. My dad loves flowers. He loves nature in general. He loves the rush of cycling down whatever mountain his heart desires as it all flows by. He loves how refreshing and freeing it is to swim in the most amazing lakes you can imagine. Little by little, there will be no flowers left to love. Do I send a dove up to grieve what everything once used to be because I see no improvement? 
The water is increasing its movement and this once beautiful nature will be our downfall because we have mistreated it. Mistreated it to the point it just feels defeated. I love flowers. I love how flowers smell. I love how they can be used as their own language. I love how flowers connect me to my family. I don't want flowers to be something that I reminisce because we should feel real lucky they even exist. Amazing, thank you for sharing that beautiful poem with us, Ellen. Okay, let's move on to our next guest from right here in Edinburgh. Please make lots of noise for Laura! A forgotten funeral. She ached and grasped at the smouldering sky, laid down in plastic, a casket lie. Her bones stiffened and stilled to stone. In her death, she was alone. Her hair dirty, tangled, matted and soiled, eyes cloudy and dull, her beauty was spoiled. Thick black blood seeped and left her bare, her life drained to please a millionaire. On eternal display, she had no tomb. Instead of respect, they chose to consume. Her skin spoke of blisters, cinders and sediment. They abused her until she was an accident. No wood for a coffin, no flower to display, no time for black dresses, no family to pray, no friends to mourn, no eulogy to say, no tears to be shed on her last day. The sea of mankind stood like spectators, no sacrifice or sobbing, they had betrayed her. Their ears tuned for a siren of danger to leave as soon as they have changed her. They shuffled and shifted to see her remains, checking her death for purely selfish gains. They turned their backs to disown and to forget, like she was just some unwashable debt. Her eyes pried open, although she had bled, not staring up, but staring ahead. Her killer, her enemy, her lover, her child, abandoned and left her, forever defiled. No wood for a coffin, no flowers to display, no time for black dresses, no family to pray, no friends to mourn, no eulogy to say, no tears to be shed on her last day. Man will desert our one true home, never to return to a grave never dug. Did I mention that the, the students basically wrote these poems, edited these poems, rehearsed these poems, and are now performing these poems this week, all this week? It's a pretty remarkable turnaround. Um, and I feel like with quality like that, it's, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Laura. Let's get our next guest up to the stage. Please make lots of noise for our fight check. I'll be reading a poem titled, A Letter to Climate Change. <clears throat> Dear Climate Change, please leave. You are unwanted here. Our skies are clear, please disappear. Our weather's fine, but you, you've crossed the line. Fires, floods, and smoky factories leaving people with no home. Do we deserve it? I do not know. Well, maybe so. But you are not wanted here. You cannot grow. The plastic pollution preventing sea life evolution, burning greenhouse gases, spreading our pollution to the masses. In reality, is it really you? People throwing plastic in the ocean, they really have no clue what damage they are causing. Factories burning fossil fuels, depriving us of clean air. Fishermen overfishing, leaving species on the brink of extinction. Is it really you or is it us who've caused this residue? Maybe all the blame shouldn't fall on you. Dear climate change, maybe I've been unfair. There has been affairs of toxic waste dumped into the ocean by greedy companies. Money grubbing officials only seeking a promotion. Careless, selfish CEOs, they know the harm they are causing, the destruction of the world. Politicians watching, keeping themselves curled curled up in a ball sitting behind their, their big pile of money. It's all they care about. Is it really you or is it us who've caused this residue? Is it really you 
or I should be writing a letter to. No. Dear Earth. Cheers, thank you so much, Wojciech. Um, yeah, it's been a long time since a poem made me want to punch a CEO, but here we are. <laughs> uh, powerful, amazing stuff. Okay, we've got a couple of guests left for you this evening, so let's go wild for the next one, please. Welcome to the stage, Isabella! <laughs> So I wrote this one today. <laughs> um, so this is basically my first draft, my first and only draft, and it's called My Body. You rain every day now. You'll stop any day now. We've now harmed you enough. A puff of our toxic gas has got to you, through you. Now there's a hole. Used to be whole full of pretty plants and nouns. Now we don't chant apologies and change our ideologies to look like the good guys. The sweet guys, they also caring guys, they reuse, renew, recycle guys, as if it's to our surprise that you're dying. You've now passed. There's no more sun, therefore no more hope of going back to normal. Normal. You mean the trash everywhere you look normal. My body is not your bed, my body is not for you to destroy, but now that you have, it's not for you to mourn. I can only give up my body for you, to use as a home, now you've turned it into chrome. Plastic metal glass, clear silver brass and chrome. Everything but green. You've ruined me. You're no victim. Damaging the ecosystem with your selfish ways, now it's my turn to watch you burn. With no home, no place to live, I now choose to become a bystander. And with high standards, I'll never let anyone like you live in my body. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Isabella. Um, we have one more uh, artist to, to come and read for us this evening. So let's give her a big warm welcome. Please go wild for Alisa. Hello. Um, so I have two poems today. So I'll start with the one called The Sun Speaks. I can talk to the sun. He has a lot to say. Every morning, I turn the air up and listen to him. He's angry. No, that's too mild a word. He's enraged. Before his planning, his baby, his lifeblood. And we don't even care. He's not going to let it go. He's watched as we burn fossil fuels, produce more meat to make meat, flood the streets with clothes from shame. He's observed we put plastic into our oceans, made the Arctic inhabitable for its natural wildlife, all while the rich CEOs line their pockets with blood money and blend the working class. He puts trust in us, and this is how we drink it. But you see, when the sun gets angry, he gets really angry. He burns. He burns harder than we could imagine, hot as boiled water, hot as hell. And until we've calmed him down, he won't stop. He speaks to me again today, this time with a message. Be better. Do better. Live better. I will be well if you follow the golden rule. Be better. Do better. Live better. <laughs> the second one doesn't actually have a title, so <laughs> but it's just about Ireland, which is where I'm from, so I like it. My Ireland is a beautiful mess. My Ireland is an ugly masterpiece. A place where dreams come true and die at the same time. It's long that summer has arrived when 30 Spanish students take up the path. Will you try and weave your way through? Because you really need bread, milk, and smoke from Centra. It's your mad point in out the bullet hole in the angel statue's breast at the end of O'Connell Street and giggling quietly about a socialism and tearing and shout at you. It's meeting your friends to go to town and go everywhere and nowhere, see everything and nothing, meet everyone and no one. It's looking away from the drug deals outside your car, fiddling on your phone to avoid eye contact while they hide money in empty cost cups so they complete ignorance if the guardie find it. It's gone on a hike with your family, while you wheeze and beg to please stop. Your legs burning from the pain, now your arms have got red from sunburn, and all your complaints vanishing when you see the view. Rows of houses is miles away, full of families, friends, couples, strangers, people whose stories you'll never know, and the blue sea twinkling ships on the horizon, and green, 
Green as far as you can see in every direction, reminding you of a feeling that name or describe and you feel alive, alive, alive. Yes, this is my Ireland. Not everything is perfect, but nothing is, is it? <laughs> Ireland is mine, my home, all mine. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, thank you so much for finishing us off with that poem. I feel like that was a brilliant way to, to end our evening. Um, so yeah, nothing left to do apart from to say a massive thank you to, to all the, the performers that you've seen tonight. Um, thank you to the Scottish Poetry Library for, for making this happen and, and making this collaboration come to life and, and giving us the time and the space and the resources to, to do it properly and, and to really kind of spend the time and, and create amazing poetry um, with these incredibly talented students. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's give a big round of applause for everyone you saw tonight. So that was Connor. Go up and tell the poets how great they were afterwards because <laughs> as, as poets we do function entirely on validation, we do, we do want it, so please go and tell them how amazing they were tonight um, and I hope that whatever happens you will continue to, to write poems and express yourself and put it out into the world in some way um, because I think we're a much better place for, for having you uh, express yourself and put your art into the world, so yeah. Thank you so much, and see you all later. Cheers.